Welcome to It's the Economy. That the July-September quarter was a washout in terms of consumption is now obvious from most of the corporate results that we've got. Hopes were pinned on the festive season, that is October. Today, we start a series of chats on whether the festive demand came up to speed. We start with the one person who perhaps represent, represents Diwali snacking at its best, Haldi Rams. Joining me is Mr. A.K. Tyagi, the executive director of the company and to represent the industry, Mr. Kumar Rajagopalan, the CEO of the Retailers Association of India. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, belated Diwali greetings to both of you. Uh, Mr. Tyagi, let me start with you. Uh, I mean, how, do you make comparisons four weeks to Diwali this year versus four weeks to Diwali last year? How are the numbers stacking up? Yeah, first of all, I take this opportunity to convey very, very happy Diwali to all our customers. Uh, definitely, festival season of year 2024 is better than year 2023, and the growth varies from 5 to 15 percent, depending upon the product. Mm -hmm. uh, can you elaborate when you say depending on the product? Were premium products more in demand? were uh, more of your mass products, small packets, large, any more color you can give us? Every sale of the both products are approximately same because the customer for premium product is different than the customer for the mass product. But at the same time, the volume of the mass product is always much higher than the premium product. Okay. So what was 15 and what was 5? Pardon? You said uh, the demand was 5 to 15 percent higher. So, what was in the 15 percent range? What was in the 5 percent range? For example, the volume of Son Papri is much higher than the Katu Katli. So, definitely the growth of the Son Papri is approximately 5 percent. But at the same time, the growth of the Katu Katli is 10 to 12 percent. Okay. okay. So, the nature of the sweets, uh, I think I will be in the 10 to 12% uh, <laughs> preference. Uh, Mr. Rajgopalan, uh, thank you very much again uh, for joining us. What has been the uh, messages you have got from your uh, uh, association members? I know it is too early for you to give us the overall number, but uh, I believe you did a dipstick survey. What are the results? Thank you, Lata, and season's greetings to all of you. Uh, I think, the like you said, it's a dipstick survey. Uh, we've got details from some of our key members and the impression that we are getting is that Diwali uh, has kind of shown a growth of about 10 to 12 percent when you take it across categories. Uh, okay. uh, definitely people who participate during Diwali, at least the categories like jewelry, garments, etc. have done well. I do hear that uh, the contribution of various Kinds of cities has also been good. So it's been tier one, tier two, tier three. All these cities, the growth has been decent. Uh, we call it good because, um, like you said, up to September, the businesses were not really growing much at all. Uh, so hardly three to five percent. And that too, on a like for like basis, many of the businesses were not doing well. So compared to that, this four weeks before Diwali, the initial impression is that uh, businesses have done well. Uh, we also hear that uh, maybe the food and grocery part of the businesses have not participated as, as much. The growth may not be the double digit, but most of the other categories have done well. CDIT, the consumer durables and information technology products have also done well. They have also had a few good launches during this time. So, yeah, overall, that's been a better Diwali than uh, what was either to seen up to September. Okay. No, it was, I take your point that uh, sept up to September, uh, things were looking very bleak and uh, October uh, clearly saw a lot of demand. But uh, will you have any numbers to say whether Diwali of 24 was better than, I mean, was the growth, this 10 to 12 percent that you are talking about, right? Uh, was that more yeah. than what you saw in Diwali 2023? Yes, I think the last time in Diwali 2023 it was about some 7 or 8 percent. Okay. Uh, but, but I do have to put this caveat that the final numbers have not come in. But the mm. initial impression is that it's better than Diwali 2023 because by Diwali, the businesses, last year, the businesses had already started seeing a flat growth. 2022 mm. was a fantastic year for mm. most retailers. So compared to that, it didn't look very great in 2023. Mm. Uh, 2024, I think things are picking up. 
the premium segment definitely is doing well. Uh, the good news that I'm hearing is that even in the value segment, there has been growth of about say, 8% or so, which if the numbers corroborate subsequently, I can tell with definitive confidence, but that's a very good number if that's the way it is. Because, yeah. because otherwise, the value segment was not doing so well. Mm. No, that's that's uh, 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 extremely welcoming news that uh, it was better than the previous Diwali. And you said that grocery and foods didn't do well. I have some data from Datum Intelligence, which is tracking e-commerce deliveries. And they have done best in groceries and home uh, and uh, hardly much uh, in terms of fashion. So clearly, uh, there seems to be a segregation. People have preferred e-commerce for maybe food and groceries and more uh, you know, for consumer durables and fashion, uh, they have come to the retailers. Uh, Mr. Tyagi, what has been your experience? You all are in all categories. You all offer to the e-commerce guys as well as uh, to, uh, you know, the uh, brick and mortar shops. Uh, how much is e-commerce, uh, 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 you know, uh, contributing? And is there a growth in e-commerce as well? Yeah, there is definitely much higher growth in e-commerce as compared to general trade. But the market of general trade is much higher in terms of the value. If you see India, current the market of the general trade is around 85 to 90 percent. Yes. And in 10, 10 to 15 percent, there will be modern trade and e-commerce. Yes. So modern trade is also growing better. Similarly, e-commerce is also growing better. But at the same time, the general trade also growing from 5 to 10 percent. Yeah. No, fair point. Uh, uh, modern trade still accounts for a very small proportion and that's why you can see it uh, growing. Lata, I want to come in for a minute. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lata, I just want to tell you the numbers that I get are across. Mm -hmm. yeah, the numbers that I get are across channels because most of the members are doing multi-omni-channel businesses. Many of them are also brands who do mm -hmm. business across categories. So when they give numbers, they are talking about Consolidated channels, they don't segregate channels and tell us. So whatever numbers I tell represents online as well as on offline as a consolidated number. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, Mr. Tyagi, I, uh, Kumar was saying that uh, all three, tier one, tier two, tier three have done well. Uh, was there any city-wise uh, nuances that you can give us? Did tier one do better than tier two or uh, any which way? In Diwali for our, especially for our product, Definitely, urban market is better, much better than the rural market. Okay. Because the Diwali gift distribution in urban market is much higher as compared mm -hmm. to the market. But uh, rural growth of the rural market is also good. But uh, the urban market will play the critical role in Diwali festival. Okay. Uh, what is the uh, uh, performance before the festive season in, in terms of rural-urban split, Mr. Tyagi? Uh, did you see so, uh, any know, stagnation in rural uh, and even in overall growth? As Kumar was saying, uh, Q3 or rather July, August, September was a washout in many categories. The rural market is also growing double digit. So growth is not bad in the rural market. And uh, if you take the especially festival, so mm -hmm. definitely the growth in urban market is much higher than the rural market. If you take the year, year, yearly performance, uh -huh. the do the future of the FMCG industry will go to the rural growth. Okay. And uh, no, have you seen in your own case, July, August, September, a little tepid compared to a year ago? No. The rural market is also growing double digit. Okay. No, no. I, uh, uh, it's very good to hear that the rural market is also growing double digits. I'm just asking you if the July, August, September quarter was also good for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, no. What are the... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Haan, July, August, September, it is also near to double digit. Oh, all right, all right. So clearly, Haldiram stands out. Uh, Mr. Tyagi, what is the sense you are getting about the last quarter? That is not just October, but November, December, which will be, uh, you know, marriage quarter, uh, wedding season, uh, holiday season as well, to some extent. Uh, so we, are, are we, are you... esti we are estimating around double digit growth. For the okay. for Can you the put year. a number to it? Double digit is a large number. Are you expecting uh, around, around early 10. teens, mid teens, uh, uh, high teens? Around 10 to 12 percent. Okay, so pretty much uh, uh, like in the festive season. 
Kumar, any indications? Is there a lot of inventory build up and therefore Q3 is likely, the uh, remaining two months of Q3 are likely to be tepid? Or is it the other way around that, uh, uh, you know, things are brighter, the harvest is in the uh, uh, go down and therefore more money? Uh, how do you assess the second half of the year? I think as far as inventories are concerned, most of the retailers have been slightly careful in the way they carry inventory because they've seen six months of not much of growth. Uh, the requirement may actually be slightly different now because there's a lot of wedding season that's happening now. So this could be the start of good times. Hopefully all of us uh, are at least expecting it that way. So some amount of inventory buildup is bound to happen now, even as we go into, also it's autumn winter for many of the garment retailers. It's a different season. Again, there is inventory buildup. So I don't think inventory should be the worry. The question is going to be, is the marriage season going to be as strong because from now up to December end, there is a whole lot of marriages as well as then Christmas to follow. So we would expect business to happen. We just like that businesses for the value segment also happen so that the entire country is uh, seen to be positive about what's flying high. Because end of the day, people come and buy when they think the future looks good. But are you saying that uh, for the you know year to date, up to October, the value uh, categories didn't do as well as premium? Yes, definitely. I think the market was going through this whole premium uh, premiumization or whatever you call it. Uh, because most of the premium brands kept doing well all through. But when it came to the, the value segment is where there were some question marks. Also, the, in the middle class segment, there was an issue that was there because many did not participate. They were maybe buying larger items uh, and uh, big capital items because they were buying new houses, new cars, etc. And EMIs were also kind of coming into their uh, requirements. Uh, things could be changed now. It could, okay. could be that slowly people are getting to be okay. more positive about what will happen. Also, during festivals and during marriages is when there is, an, there is a need for people to come out and yeah. buy. No, no, people let down the hair. So-called discretionary true. product. Yeah, no, we, we'll have to wait and see. We are <laughs> so all hoping, discretionary of course. discretionary becomes almost compulsory. Yes, fair yeah. point. Uh, we have to yeah. wait and see how the uh, last quarter, the third quarter pans out. Uh, very quickly, a last question to you, Mr. Tyagi. How much is inflation pinching both the consumer and your own margins. After all, food prices yeah. did rise. So did that, you have a margin impact? Was your consumer resisting higher prices? They definitely did uh, impact on our margin because uh, Haldiram believe in the affordable price. So we have passed the major inflation to our margin, but some of the part we have passed to the customer also. Mm -hmm. But major part we have pa passed to our margin, so we are under the margin. Our margin is under pressure. Okay. Okay. By how many percentage points do you think it fell by how much? And the margin will become the half uh, okay. because this is the temporary from now. So we okay. don't want to pass the far, major part of the inflation to the consumer. As soon okay. as the price will reduce, the margin will increase automatically. All oh, right. We uh, well, one hopes so. Saving the inflation. Okay. We'll have to leave you there. That's uh, out of time. Uh, Kumar and Mr. Tyagi, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. The uh, uh, key takeaway is that the festive season has been a very good one for uh, retail trade as well as for uh, the Haldi Rams. We will have to wait and see whether the momentum is kept after a rather tepid uh, first half for retail trade. Haldi Rams, of course, has not had a tepid time at all. We wrap up on Bazaar on that note. Chalkbusters coming up.